Before we start today's episode, I want to recommend another amazing podcast to all of you listening. Simple English News Daily is a daily summary of the most important news happening around the world every day. And the best part? It's recorded in intermediate English. If you're interested in the news, current affairs and improving your English listening skills, I really recommend listening to Simple English News Daily. It's a great way to stay up to date with the world news while also practicing English. And it is just seven minutes long, uploaded every weekday, Monday to Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, you will have podcasts to listen to. You can find a link to Simple English News Daily in the description or it is available on all podcasting apps. Thanks to Simple English News Daily for supporting this episode. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, two of the wealthiest and most influential men on the planet, are currently arguing. The reason? A new app called Threads. Let's discuss this new app and the news on today's episode of Thinking in English. You can access the full transcript of this episode for free over on the Thinking in English blog. Here is today's vocabulary list. Founder. Founder. Someone who establishes an organization. As in, she is the founder and managing director of the company. Rival. Rival. A person, group, etc. competing with others for the same thing or in the same area. For example, the companies produce rival versions of the toy. Social media. Social media. Websites and computer programs that allow people to communicate and share information on the internet using a computer or mobile phone. For instance, companies are increasingly making use of social media in order to market their goods. Platform. Platform. A method of communication or entertainment, for example, television, radio or the internet. As in, we are currently selling advertisements across several different platforms. Web, internet phones and multiple sections of the newspaper. To acquire. To acquire. To get or obtain something. For example, I was wearing a newly acquired jacket. To rebrand. To rebrand. To change the way that an organization, company or product is seen by the public. For example, Facebook rebranded to Meta a few years ago. To take advantage of something. To take advantage of something. To use an opportunity to achieve results, sometimes in an unfair way. For example, Let's take advantage of the good weather and go to the beach. Backlash. Backlash. A strong feeling among a group of people in reaction to a change or recent events in society or politics. For instance, there has been a backlash against the proposals. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg are two of the most influential, powerful and wealthy individuals on the planet. One is a South African entrepreneur known for founding SpaceX, being CEO of Tesla and recently buying Twitter. The other is founder of Facebook and owner of Instagram, WhatsApp and more apps. Over the past few months, a rivalry has been growing between the two billionaires. First, Musk challenged Zuckerberg to a cage fight, a challenge which was apparently accepted. 
And now, Musk and his company Twitter are threatening to sue Mark Zuckerberg and his company Meta. The reason? A new app called Threads, which resembles Twitter in appearance and content. Some have been referring to Threads as a Twitter killer, an alternative social media that will rival Musk's Twitter. Today, I want to look at this rivalry. Let's look at Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, Twitter and Meta, and why Threads has been launched. Let's start by taking a look at the two key figures in this battle, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. So who is Elon Musk? Well, Elon Musk is an entrepreneur and business magnate known for his work in technology, transportation and space exploration. I actually recorded an episode on Elon Musk and his purchase of Twitter a few months ago. Make sure you all go and check it out. However, for those of you who haven't listened yet, I'll briefly recap here. Born on June 28, 1971 in Pretoria, South Africa, Musk has made significant contributions to various different industries. After completing his high school in South Africa, he moved to Canada for further studies. In 1995, he enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania, where he earned a bachelor's degree in physics and economics. Soon after, he co-founded Zip2, a software company that provided business directories and maps for newspapers. Zip2's success led to its acquisition by Compaq for $307 million in 1999. Elon Musk carried on in the business world, co-founding X.com, an online payment company that later became PayPal. PayPal revolutionized online transactions, gained widespread popularity, and was acquired by eBay in 2002 for $1.5 billion. Musk then turned his attention to the aerospace industry and founded SpaceX in 2002, a company aiming to reduce the cost of space exploration and eventually colonize Mars. The company has achieved lots of milestones, including becoming the first privately funded company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station. SpaceX's development of reusable rockets has disrupted the aerospace industry, making space travel more affordable. Musk is probably best known for his involvement in electric vehicle company Tesla. Tesla has played a major role in promoting electric vehicles and sustainable transportation. The company has introduced groundbreaking electric cars, like the Model S, Model 3, Model X and Model Y. Apart from SpaceX and Tesla, Musk has been involved in other ventures, including Solar City, which was a solar energy services company, Neuralink, a neurotechnology company, and The Boring Company, specialising in advanced tunnelling systems. So who is Mark Zuckerberg? Mark Zuckerberg is best known as the co-founder of Facebook and currently serves as the CEO of Meta. He was born on May 14, 1984 in White Plains, New York, and has had lots of successes in his career. During his time at Harvard University, Zuckerberg co-founded Facebook in 2004 with his college roommates. Initially, the platform was created as a way for Harvard students to connect and share information. However, its popularity quickly grew, and it expanded to other universities and eventually became accessible to the general public. Facebook has revolutionised the way people communicate and interact online, becoming one of the most widely used social media platforms with billions of active users worldwide. Zuckerberg continuously introduced new features and innovations in his company, expanding the platform beyond social networking. Facebook now includes messaging, photo sharing, events, and a marketplace for buying and selling things. Zuckerberg's focus on user experience and connectivity has made Facebook 
uh, an integral part of people's daily lives. Even if you don't use Facebook, you might use Messenger or WhatsApp or Instagram. I'll talk about how the other companies and apps owned by uh, Zuckerberg in a second, but it's important to the context of this episode to know that Zuckerberg and Facebook have been accused of copying and stealing some other people's ideas. So now let's take a look at the apps involved in this situation. Twitter. Twitter is a widely used social media platform that allows users to share and engage with short messages called tweets. It was co-founded by Jack Dorsey, Biz Stone and Evan Williams in 2006. The concept behind Twitter is to provide a platform where users can express their thoughts, opinions and updates in 280 characters or less. This distinguished Twitter from other social media platforms. It encouraged users to be concise. Since its foundation, Twitter has become an influential platform for news, trends and discussions. It allows users to follow other accounts and receive updates from them in their personalised feed. Twitter's real-time nature makes it particularly useful for live events, breaking news and public conversations on a global scale. As an app, Twitter has undergone several developments and improvements over the years. It introduced features like hashtags, which help categorise and discover relevant content, and retweets, which allow users to share tweets from others. Twitter also expanded its capabilities by adding features such as direct messaging, threaded conversations, and the option to create and follow lists of accounts based on specific interests. Twitter has had a significant impact on various aspects of society, including politics, entertainment and activism. It has become a platform for public figures, organisations and individuals to connect with audiences, speak publicly and engage in discussions. In 2022, Elon Musk announced his intention to buy Twitter. I've recorded an entire episode on this, so go and listen to it. But in summary, since Musk has taken over Twitter, the app has not been the same. After spending months trying to back out of the deal to buy Twitter, Musk eventually completed his purchase in October last year. And here are just a few of the recent Twitter controversies. Elon Musk fired the majority of Twitter's staff. Policies to counter hate speech are gone. Mainstream advertisers have left the platform, impacting its revenue. Users are now required to pay for verified status. Twitter recently experienced accessibility issues, making the site unusable for many people. Musk limited the number of posts non-paying users could view to 600 per day. Twitter communication staff has been terminated, making it difficult to obtain explanations for any changes. And there has been an increase in hate speech and conspiracy theorist usage of the site. So in this climate, many people have been looking for an alternative to Twitter. And this is where Meta and Threads comes in. Meta, formerly known as Facebook, is a leading technology company founded by Mark Zuckerberg in 2004. It has grown into a global social media platform connecting billions of users worldwide. Over the years, Facebook has acquired several notable companies and its recent rebranding to Meta reflects its changing ambitions. Facebook's foundation can be traced back to Zuckerberg's dorm room at Harvard University, where he initially created the platform as a way for college students to connect and share information. The platform has changed online communication and networking, enabling us to share posts, photos and videos while connecting with friends, family and communities. As Facebook grew, it began a strategy of buying other companies, most famously Instagram, a popular photo sharing platform acquired in 2012, and WhatsApp, a widely used messaging app acquired in 2014. In recent years, Facebook has undergone a significant transformation, leading to the rebranding of the parent company as Meta. 
the shift reflects a broader vision to build the metaverse, a virtual space where people can interact, work, play and explore in digital environments. Over the past few months, rumours had been heard that Meta was developing a rival to Twitter, and this was confirmed by the launch of Threads. At first glance, the apps do look very similar. You can post a thread, which is like tweeting, repost those threads, like retweeting, and reply to them. And like Twitter, the app allows real-time public conversations and aims to create spaces for different communities. It is a space for public communication, just like Twitter. Threads is currently part of and connected with Instagram, the massively popular meta-owned photo sharing platform. You need to have an Instagram account to make a Threads account, and you are able to share your threads directly to Instagram. And even though it's not available in every country, Mark Zuckerberg claimed 30 million accounts had been made on the first day. Apparently, Instagram aims to make threads work across multiple apps in the future, likely Facebook, Messenger and WhatsApp. Right now, threads can be downloaded in about 100 countries, but not in the EU, which now has some very strict data sharing laws. So why has Instagram launched threads? Well, Meta has launched Threads as a competitor to Twitter, using Instagram's resources and user base. Meta has obviously seen an opportunity to take advantage of the challenges Twitter faced under Elon Musk's leadership. Twitter's instability and uncertainty has left users wanting an alternative. And by building Threads on Instagram's existing platform, Meta can use its already established community. The timing of Thread's release was influenced by the recent controversy surrounding Musk's restrictions on tweet visibility. This backlash showed that Twitter users were dissatisfied and open to exploring alternative apps. Meta accelerated the launch of Threads to attract the attention of disillusioned users and cater to the demand for a user-friendly social media platform. Meta has big ambitions for Threads and expects it to gain a significant user base in the initial months. While acknowledging the risks of introducing a new app, Meta sees Threads as an opportunity. By providing a platform that meets the needs of creators and its community, Meta aims to establish Threads as a space for public discussions, just as Twitter once was. So, in the battle of the social media giants, will Meta be able to defeat Twitter? Well, Threads has been emphasising the importance of kindness and a positive user experience, which is a key difference from Twitter. Zuckerberg has suggested that Twitter's failure to maintain a positive environment has caused its problems. Musk's tenure as leader of Twitter has been characterised by controversial changes and actions such as job cuts, viewing limits and strange decisions, which have contributed to a negative public image for Twitter. This has created an opportunity for Meta to offer an alternative. However, users do tend to be reluctant to switch social media platforms and learn something new. But Threads has a few factors in its favour. First, if you already have an Instagram account, making a Threads account takes less than 10 seconds, and you will automatically be following all of the same people as you do on Instagram. Instagram has 2 billion users, a lot more than Twitter, and apparently already 70 million or so people have joined Threads. Second, it looks a lot like Twitter, so you don't really have to learn too much. If you know how to use Twitter, you will know how to use Threads. Users who rely on Twitter for public communication, such as commentators, journalists, influencers and politicians, are crucial for the success of threads. If high-profile users and content creators start using threads, so will other people. However, threads is not without potential controversies. It's not available in the EU yet due to data privacy concerns, 
and it is connected with Instagram, meaning that you cannot delete your Threads account without deleting your Instagram account as well. Meta will always have another advantage over Twitter. Advertising. While Twitter has lost many of its advertisers due to Elon Musk, Meta has one of the largest advertising systems in the world. Although Threads doesn't have ads yet, it will one day. Other Twitter rivals like Mastodon and Blue Sky are too small and confusing to really challenge Twitter. But Threads, backed by Meta's expertise and infrastructure, represents a significant challenge to Twitter and Elon Musk. Moreover, Mark Zuckerberg's competitive spirit to make the most powerful social media company in the world is driving this rivalry with Musk and Twitter. So here is today's final thought. Threads could be the most serious threat to Twitter yet. Musk's leadership of Twitter has driven many users away from the platform and threads could be an option for people to use. What is interesting, however, is that threads is not a completely clean and friendly application. It's owned by Meta, a company that has a terrible reputation when it comes to data handling. The app is not available in Europe because of this reason. Despite this, Threads looks likely to offer an option for the millions of Twitter users angry at Elon Musk's actions. But what do you think? Do you use Twitter? Have you downloaded Threads? What do you think about these apps? Are you going to be using Threads? Are you going to stop using Twitter? Or do you just not care about <laughs> social media at all? Let me know by leaving a comment on the Thinking in English transcript a comment on Spotify, uh, or you can reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram is Thinking in English Podcast. Uh, but I really encourage you all to go check out the transcript to this episode. I make transcripts every week, and today I'm trying something new. I'm launching interactive transcripts where you can listen and read at the same time using some special software I bought at the weekend. Um, so please go and check it out. Right now, it's exclusive to Patreon users, but it's just $5 for a month to become a basic level Patreon user. And you can listen to bonus episodes and check out my interactive transcript. But that's enough promotion. So thank you so much for listening today, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>